On this episode of Art on Del Marva, we'll be exploring the town of Berlin, Maryland, where we stop by the Worcester County Arts Council and talk with Executive Director Anya Mullis and chat with artists about the upcoming plein air event. Then we head over to Jeffrey Oxer's glass blowing studio and take a look at his glass shop and gallery. Then right off Main Street, we stop by the beautiful J.J. Fish Gallery, followed by a stop at Stephen Decatur Park for a moment of reflection. Hi, I'm here with Anya from the Worcester County Arts Council. Can you tell me about the Worcester County Arts Council? Sure. Um, the Worcester County Arts Council is a nonprofit um, local organization uh, established in 1976 and designated by the Worcester County Commissioners and the Maryland State Arts Council to be a leader for the arts in our county. Does the Worcester County Arts Council do anything for the community? Uh, absolutely. Our mission is to uh, promote, encourage, ad advise uh, all programs, art programs in Worcester County and uh, in the population um, in our county, it's over 50,000. We serve more than 100,000 people with uh, various programs uh, such as community arts development grant, um, art scholarships, uh, we offer classes and workshops for children and adults. Um, uh, also, we provide um, annual summer arts camp for children and co-sponsor different art events throughout the year. Could you tell me about the art camps for children? Uh, the summer arts camp for children is one of our most popular programs. Uh, this year, uh, we have marked the 21st anniversary of this program. Uh, we started it in 1993. Uh, so it's been mon more than 21 years uh, and the program has grown in popularity. Uh, this year we've had more than 100 children participating. Um, they are in grades 3 to 8 and we've had 10 different art classes and workshops for them to choose from. So how do people find out about these classes and workshops? Um, all the classes and workshops are listed on our website. We also send the press releases uh, to local papers and um, of course communicate with our membership. So the best way to find out is become a member of the Arts Council and uh, help us support the arts. So how, how would someone become a member? Um, currently we have almost 300 members uh, within our organization and they play an extremely important role in supporting the arts in our county. Um, some people are a little intimidated thinking that uh, to be a member of the Arts Council you must be an artist and that's not true. Um, we have a lot of people uh, who just basically want to support the arts and they, uh, um, they are great art enthusiasts but uh, we also have a big group of artists, um, so uh, anytime anybody can join in. So there's a difference between the just being a member and being a member that is an artist. Um, are, are there, you have a co-op here, correct? We do, we have a um, different level of our membership. Like I said, anybody can become a member, but we also offer opportunities for local artists to uh, be members of our co-op gallery. We have this beautiful space in our building where currently 25 local artists display work year around. Um, we feature uh, each of uh, artists each month, different artists. Uh, and we focus on the form of art. Um, so um, we welcome any artists who would like to join us. And you have different events that happen. Can you tell me about some of the different events that the Worcester County Arts Council sure. puts on? Uh, summer and fall season are one of the, the, the busiest times of the year um, for us. Um, we actually getting ready uh, in September to host the fifth annual Plan Air Paint Berlin. Can you tell me about Paint Berlin? Uh, this year marks the fifth anniversary of our Plan Air Paint Berlin. Um, uh, the event will be um, during the weekend of September 18th to uh, September 20th. Um, the registration is open to 50 uh, artists and it's, it's still open so uh, we encourage anybody who would like to go out there and set up the easel and paint to register with us. And how would they register? 
Uh, the registration is open on our website at um, www.worcestercountyartscouncil.org or anybody can call us um, at 410-641-0809 or stop by in our gallery and register in person. So what, what, is there a fee for registering or is there anything that they need to know? There is an artist registration fee of $40 um, and uh, the fee um, covers um, artist lunch and um, exhibiting opportunities. So is there anything is there anything that the artist needs to know about like where how do they decide where to go? Can they go anywhere in Berlin? Artists can paint within uh, the three miles radius from our building uh, and they can select the location. Can you tell me about how the show gets judged? Each year we select a judge uh, for Paint Berlin and uh, the artist who's uh, chosen to be a judge um, selects the pieces that he or she um, decides to award and they, in the show. And they bring them here to the Worcester County Arts Council on the, on the last day? Uh, that's correct. On uh, September 20th, we're going to have wet, uh, wet paint sale and exhibit. Um, the exhibit will be open to the public. Um, and we invite the community to come and see the beautiful uh, selection of paintings created by the artists during that weekend. And can you tell me about the prizes that the artists mm -hmm. might get? We have give? very attractive prizes uh, this year. Uh, the grand prize of $1,000 will be selected for um, winner of the first place. Uh, the second place is um, $500 and the second $250. Uh, we also um, offer $100 honorable mention and uh, people who attend our wet paint sale and exhibit can vote for People's Choice Award and we also award $100 to that artist. Wow, that's a lot of prizes and they can all be sold if, if uh, the right customer Absolutely. comes along. Absolutely, yeah, we're hoping that uh, people will come and uh, buy the beautiful pieces of art, uh, everything will be original and the exhibit will be on display until the end of October. So uh, there will be plenty of opportunities to stop by and decide which piece do you want, so. Very nice. And is there anything else that you'd like to mention about the Paint Berlin? Well, we are very uh, fortunate and uh, appreciative of Town of Berlin support this year again uh, for Paint Berlin. Uh, we have just recently been awarded a $1,500 grant from Town of Berlin and that will definitely help us with um, all the cost of the event. And all right, thank you very much. You're welcome, thank you. Hi, I'm here with an artist at the Worcester County Arts Council. Can you tell me your name? I'm Marcy Snyder. And have you participated in Paint Berlin before? I participated last year for the first time. For the first time. Mm -hmm. What was it like to participate? It was exciting, it was a little scary. Um, and I found out that I needed to research my site a little bit better than I had done before. And um, how did you decide where to paint? Um, I decided because, first of all, I was able to park my car close enough to where I could set up my easel, ah. and it helped me. Therefore, I didn't have to carry as much as Supplies, far. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and. Did people stop and watch you while you were painting? I didn't have a lot of people stop. Um, they did, uh, there were several people that did stop, particularly the people who worked in the church that I was painting. And um, I found it a little bit distracting. I had to rethink every time somebody interrupted oh. me, but otherwise it was, it was fun to talk to them. Yes. Were you able to sell the work that you made at the show? I eventually sold it, yes. I don't know that it sold that same evening or that at the wet paint sale, but yes, I did sell it. How many pieces were you able to make during the event? Just one. Just one. Mm -hmm. I worked primarily in the mornings. And what medium did you use? I used uh, acrylic. Acrylic uh -huh. paints. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that you'd like to tell any artists that would be interested in participating? Any tips that you can give anybody? I think possibly to paint in the morning and in the evening. Um, I found, well, especially with acrylics, they dried once the sun was hitting them, and so it was yeah. difficult then to renew them to paint. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm here with another artist at the Worcester County Arts Council. Can you tell me your name? Yes, my name is David Simpson. Have you participated in the Paint Berlin? Yes, I've participated the last 
three years. This will be my fourth year. And what is it like for you to participate? Um, being outside is very, you know, very good experience. Uh, it changes it up from being in the studio. It is a little demanding, but uh, you know, you get a breath of fresh, fresh air, so to speak. Would you say it's harder to paint outside than inside? <laughs> Absolutely. The elements are constantly challenging you. Um, say, for example, the best you know example would be that light is constantly changing throughout the day, minute by minute, you know, hour by hour, especially. And how did you decide where to to paint your paintings? Uh, that's a secret. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, seriously, I, I one of my favorite spots is Stephen Decatur Park. I spend most of my time there when I'm in Berlin, and I, there's something very sentimental to me about that park, and I think that comes out in my painting. Not to mention, there's a lot of shade and a lot of play on light because the light, you know, comes through the trees and, and hits the, you know, hits the grass or the street very you know very well particularly in the early morning late afternoon so it's a place that has some meaning to you and and it, that attracts you exactly to it. exactly nice. which is important to me as an artist and um did did people tend to stop and talk to you while you were working uh yes uh last year i i did a painting of the back side of saint paul's church looking down the street and I almost ran out of time because I misjudged the season and uh, you know the, the, how fast the sun was setting and people t in the evening were going for walks and they were talking to me and I, and I kind of had to sort of paint and talk at the same time which made it you know interesting. Um, but it's a different yes, kind of experience then. It, 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 yes, it, it's very nice that the people stop and talk. That's part of, I think, what's very important about the uh, show because it really is an opportunity for artists to help like educate the public on, on you know, painting and being an artist and what painting from life is really about. Is there any tips that you could give any artists that are interested in participating in Paint Berlin? Uh, the biggest tip I would say is if you can, you know, maybe have a big hat, a lot of sunscreen, bug spray, uh, and especially weight. You know, weight, yeah. being able to weight down your setup is very important, um, especially if you're in an open sort of setting. I've definitely worn a painting before, literally speaking. <laughs> so, but uh, it's nothing you can't correct, I guess. So, so take all your supplies that you're going to need that day because yeah, you're going to be outside yeah. all day long. A a Plan absolutely, ahead. absolutely. Right. A lot of a lot of preparation involved. All right. Thank you very much, David. Yeah, ab absolutely, Sarah. Thank you. I'm here with an artist in Berlin. Can you tell me your name? I'm Jeff Oxer. And you have a business here, correct? Correct. I have a glassblowing studio and gallery here on 19 Jefferson Street, right behind the Atlantic Hotel. How did you decide to get into glassblowing? Um, I took it as an elective at Salisbury when I was a senior and decided that I really enjoyed it. So I finished and went back and took it some more and then decided to, uh, to go for it. And how did you choose Berlin to set up shop? Um, well, I lived in Ocean Pine, so it was close, and it just happened to work out that this is where I found a building. But they also have incentives for artists here because it's a historic, or it's an arts district, arts and entertainment in the state of Maryland. So there's like tax incentives and building incentives for you to come and produce artwork. So how long have you been blowing glass? Um, I've been blowing glass for about uh, nine years. And what do you like about blowing glass? Um, it's just, I enjoy it. Um, I enjoy creating new things, being creative and not making the same things over and over, being able to 
let customers order things and then that allows me to just create new items that maybe I haven't ever made before so it's always challenging. And what's your biggest seller? Um, well it depends on the time of the year. At Christmas we sell a ton of the ornaments but right now it seems that we're doing a lot of custom lighting. So your, your custom lighting, people can order that directly from you? Yeah, people, depending on what it is, if it's like a business or a home, you know, depending on the project size, I can come out and then we go through everything and decide what they want and then they come in and pick sizes, shapes, colors for the chandeliers or whatever they want and then um, we draw something up and then we just go from there. How long does a custom chandelier usually take? It depends on the size. If it's just something where I'm adding globes a week or two, if it's something that is massive then it could take you know three four months okay and um what's your price range on those things um well, i do custom lighting a lot and the globes run about 95 dollars and then they can i mean it can go up to a lot higher sky high yeah <laughs> for very ornate pieces yeah for large chandeliers where are some of your pieces that your big chandeliers located um right now i have one in the ocean city art league building um the center for the arts on 94th street um that one's it's, it's a little different than most that I've done. Um, and then we have one in the Princess Royale in the Oceanfront Hotel on 93rd Street that's massive. It has about 30 feet long, 5 feet wide, and it has about 100 plates on it. And three like giant fixtures that come down. And then there's some other places like the Galaxy has a bunch of lights on 67th Street, um, plates on their wall. Um, but I mean, a lot of residencies have them too, so you can't really go see those places. Right, but. right. You're you're all over the place. Yeah, but you can check them out online at jeffreyoxer.com, and there's pictures of things that I've created on there. And you've got some classes coming up for the fall? Yeah, November and December we do ornament classes, and every year they fill up. They're every Saturday. Um, you're allowed to call November 1st and pick any Saturday you want for Christmas. Um, they're, they're very limited, so you do have to call and make a reservation. You can't just show up because they do fill up. Um, you can just call 443-513-4210, and someone will... Um, make sure you get an appointment, but they're they're fun and you know, we do a lot of them So is there an age range on that? Yeah, it's a ages four and up So, you know, I do young kids to older people. I mean, I've had adults in here like You know in their 80s and 90s making them for their great-grandkids. So Very that's pretty nice. cool. Yeah Wow. Well, thank you for your time. No problem. Thank you
I'm here in Berlin at JJ Fish. Can you tell me your name? I'm Judy Fisher. And, and this is your store? Yes. The, John and I uh, started it in uh, 2001. And you have lots of work by all sorts of artists. How many artists approximately we are in the store? We have about 70 right now. 70. That's a lot of artists. Uh, about a dozen from the Eastern Shore, Maryland, and uh, everyone else is from all over the country. And how do you find your artists? Most of these people we know from doing craft shows for like the past 25, 30 years. And do you, do you like being a part of Berlin? Oh, definitely. Berlin's a great place. Do you participate in the second Friday art strolls? Yes, we do. And usually we have uh, a guest artist and sometimes we feature uh, John Silver. And uh, he does... Um, jewelry, correct? Mm -hmm. Sterling silver, mostly. And some marbles too, I believe? Mm, he's been known to uh, play with glass a little bit. Is there any way that people can find your store? Well, we're um, on Facebook. We're listed in uh, Berlin travel information. <laughs> and by taking a nice stroll down Main Street. That's right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm.